while we wait for the plants to establish, we're going to plant some seeds of some of the larval food plants and make sure that we have a reasonable amount of leaf ready for when the butterflies breed. So firstly, let's plant the seeds for the morphos. We're going to be using these red peanuts, which you can buy in most stores and are often sold as bird food. You can plant just a few seeds per pot, usually three, and all you need to do is push them into the soil and you can place that pot somewhere in your flight area or even on a windowsill and they will start to germinate within a few days. You will need to grow quite a lot of plants, usually one plant per larvae, so you'll have to grow as many as you can to support the morphos. And we do have some seeds here of Macuna, which is a vine. They will use the Macuna more for egg laying than they will the peanut, but they do still lay on both plants. And the Macuna also, you can plant just a couple of seeds per pot, and this will grow extremely quickly into quite a large vine. Next up we have the Asclepias. This is a tropical milkweed grown for the monarch butterflies. And again, this is really simple to grow from seed. You can just sprinkle a few in the top of a pot and cover them with soil. And within a matter of weeks, you'll have lots of small plants like these, which you can then divide up and pot up individually. I have seen one method by Nigel Venters, where you simply plant around 100 seeds in a 30 centimeter diameter plant pot, and you can then use pots full of seedlings to feed your monarch larvae. And this is a really good way of mass producing leaf matter for the larvae to eat. But it does mean you will need pots and pots, each with 100 seedlings in. One way you could achieve this without spending a fortune on seeds is just to grow a few plants, let them set seed, and you can collect those up and plant them. Because you will get a lot of seed from each seed pod. And finally, we're going to grow the Rachinus, the castor oil plant. And with these, you just need to put one seed in a small pot, and they will very quickly germinate and grow. One thing you really do need to take care with this plant and with the seeds is that they are poisonous. So do make sure to keep them away from children and pets. So now that we've grown on some of the food plants, we are going to plant a lot more seeds and make sure that we really have a good amount of food plant available for the caterpillars. So let's take a look at the flight area as it currently stands. Now one thing I will say is that it does look a lot less full of plant than it did this time last year. And part of the reason for that is because we haven't gone with all of the annuals and the bedding plants which filled up a lot of the space. So even though it doesn't look quite as tropical and full, the quality of the nectar that's there, all of the lantanas that are flowering and will continue to flower, is bringing much more value for the butterflies. I do think some of the plants, for example the Passiflora, seem to be a bit behind on last year. And you have to remember, we are trialling this without any heating, so we're relying entirely on just the sun and the ambient temperature outside the greenhouse. So there definitely is enough nectar now to begin supporting some butterflies. And we're going to start thinking about ordering them, and that's what we'll be doing in the next video. And I'll show you the whole process of how to order the pupae, and we'll open the box, hang the pupae up, and start hatching them. So I'll see you then.